it's Athena and I'm back wanting to share some yummies, yummy snacks with you. Um, some of them are pure on the food program and the other is not. It's to help you uh, when you're feeling like you want to treat. By the way, I don't know if you can see her. This is Zoe. This is the same girl <laughs> who's on my chair. Um, she's ripped up this chair with her nails. And so I want to remind her when she goes to do this, not to do that. I know that's not how it works. I thought it was cute, mostly. But anyway, this is Zoe. Zoe eats an all raw diet. I make her and um, my other cat's food and I've been feeding my cats raw for years and if that interests you that you would like to see me do a video on that I may do that I also do herbs and make herbal uh, and do herbal tinctures and some formulas this is uh, felines are a focal point for me for helping them out and detoxifying and so forth. So let's get on to the melons. You know what Dr. Moore says about melons? Eat them alone or leave them alone. Don't mix them with any other food. Uh, in some places, melons and cheese are served together. First of all, I hope you're not eating cheese. But don't eat them together. So melons take, you know, depending uh, if you eat them alone, they're the fastest digesting food. They're mostly water. They may take 20 to 30 minutes to go through your system. When you add other type of food to that, not only does it slow down and interfere with the digestion, it causes fermentation in the gut, bloating, gas, and all sorts of other things that you don't want. Now, recently I was at a, an Asian market and I came across, I love trying new things. I always have. So I hope you're an adventurer and there's so many wonderful fruits and vegetables and herbs on this planet to try that I've never heard of, I've never tasted. And one of the delights in going to other places across the globe and when you're traveling is to try all these new things that you don't have access to in your immediate environment. But I was at an Asian store and I came across this. Best I understand it's called a Korean melon. So this is actually from Korea. This particular melon is about four inches long. It has a smooth... Uh, yellow skin with some lines and um, it's pretty heavy. I would say this is about uh, 16 ounces. And when you open it, first of all, I've learned that you can eat this whole thing with the skin and the seeds. I haven't tried it that way. I've peeled it and then I cut it open and scoop the seeds out. But this is what it looks like when you open it. And uh, it's, it's juicy, it's sweet, it tastes, and it's crispy. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. It has a flavor, it's like a whitish, uh, pale, creamy colored um, flesh. It's like a cross between a honeydew or a cantaloupe melon and a cucumber. If you see this, try it. It's interesting and it's refreshing. <laughs> Excuse me. I couldn't resist eating it. I've got coconut water to drink, 
So I opened up um, some coconut, drank the water, put the water in my fruit smoothie, the coconut water. Now here is the kind of guilty pleasure treat where you're still staying within the program, but you're not on the high detox of all fruit, okay? So that's up to you where you're at in your journey. If you want to treat, you know, but you definitely will not allow yourself to go into the dairy world or anything like that. So what I did, I'm wondering if you can see this. I'll tell you what it is, but I just didn't know if you could see that well. The lighting is going uh, down here. But my kitchen is really dark, so at this point there's just no point in taking you into the kitchen until I get some good lighting. But um, I took the coconut meat and blended it with water so it's thick. And then I added chia seeds. And if uh, you've used chia seeds, they're wonderful nutrient. Go ahead and look them up on the internet. C-H-I-A. And I, I put them into the coconut water blend. And usually I let that soak in there for some hours. And what will happen is the chia seed becomes very soft and expands in the water and multiplies in size. And it's really good for hydration and nourishment and also moving things along. So here's what I, I do when I want to treat. I'm not eating this now. First of all, I'm not going to eat it with the melon because... What did I just say? Melon, eat them alone or leave them alone and you just saw my eat a piece, so I'm not doing that. But I've taken some blueberries and some raspberries and some sliced banana and put it in a big bowl. I put this over it, kind of like a, a thickened milk, if you will. But this is coconut, remember, no dairy. Coconut and water blended in a high-speed blender. And you can put a little sweetener on into this milk, whether it's uh, coconut sugar, if you use honey, agave, dates, stevia, whatever you want to use as a sweetener. You can sweeten the coconut milk up. And you put it over the, the fruit mixture, whatever you like, as long as it's not melon. <laughs> and then take some cacao nibs and just put as many as you want on and then mix it together. To me, it's delicious. And, um, you know, it's, it's off the high fruit path, but you're staying still within the whole foods. You're having the berries and the fruit. You're having coconuts. You're having the fat with the coconut meat and a little bit of sweetener if you want to sweeten up the milk. And then the cacao nibs, which, you know, that could be controversial or not. You could put uh, raisins, whatever. I'm just telling you what I did. And I thought it was delicious. Now, I haven't uh, served it to anyone, so I don't know anyone else's feedback. But I'm just telling you, according to me, it was good. And I wanted to share a treat with you. If you're craving fat, sometimes I do crave fat. And... Um, I do eat avocados, I do eat coconut meat, and I find that it works really well for my digestion. Better than if I were to, I have made nut cheeses, like cashew nut cheese, by the way, that is so delicious, but it isn't, and it's addictive to me <laughs> on some level, but um, it's not as good for my digestion where I'm at right now, so... I just thought I'd share these treats with you. And also, I wanted to say something I was thinking of recently. Don't let fear stop you from trying something. Um, sometimes, you know, I read on Facebook or messages, other places, and people ask, well, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? Um, can I eat this? Can I eat that? And 
we have to experiment for ourselves often. Sometimes we can learn from other people's experiences, but sometimes we really don't know unless we try for ourselves. And I want to encourage you to do that within the voice of reason, as in within foods that you think will be good for you. Um, if you have a feeling something's going to make you feel really ill or put you in a flare-up or put you in the hospital, please, please, stay away from that. Uh, but I'm just saying, I, I sense sometimes out there there's a lot of fear of, well, what will happen if I go on a grape fast, a grape juice um, detox, or what, what will happen if I go all fruit? I mean, you've got to find out for yourself. Do it. That's real knowledge. That's real truth. When we learn for ourselves experientially, and you might surprise yourself. So be bold, be an adventurer, be a pioneer, be a witness to yourself about yourself. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you get to find this Korean melon, or if you know of any other um, wonderful things that you're eating in your part of the world, please share. I love learning about what's out there. You know, I'm in just like a little tiny little blip on this planet, but you're everywhere and have access to things that I don't have. And I'd love to learn about what you enjoy eating and what's in season for you and what's delicious and so forth. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this and it was a great pleasure being here with you. I look forward to seeing you soon and get your fruit going, get your melons and berries and um, clean up, clean out and feel good. Until we meet again next time.